Hey guys, it's Austin. Welcome to the introduction to my Roblox Lua filtering enabled tutorial series. And uh, first, I want to start off by apologizing to you guys because this video is like it's been three weeks since I last recorded a video, and that was when I announced I was going to start this series. So yeah, this is pretty overdue. Uh, a few days ago, actually like a week ago, I tried recording this, but uh, I didn't really capture my full screen since I didn't adjust my uh, recording software settings to fit my, the screen resolution of my new monitor. So that's that. So I'm going to start off by uh, telling you guys what we're going to do in this series. Uh, in this video I'm going to explain what filtering enabled is, <clears throat> how we're going to use it. I'm not going to get into much code or remote events and remote functions if you guys know what those are until the next video. So, uh, first question, we're going to ask ourselves, what is filtering enabled? Well, it's the property of workspace. So in your little explorer, select workspace, and then we scroll down to behavior, we have this property called filtering enabled. It's a bool value, we check it on and off. So, what happens when it's off? Well, I guess you could say that Roblox uh, works like normal, you don't have to specially modify your game to suit filtering enabled all that jazz nothing out of the ordinary but when you have filtering enabled on something special happens so <laughs> most people think of filtering enabled as simply an anti-exploit measure your game is unhackable even though unhackable is an incorrect term but this isn't entirely true uh, first off, filtering enabled will, if you use it right, protect your game from a lot of exploits. Two, it's not just used for that sole purpose. It can be used for quite a few other things, like uh, making local lighting, adjusting the lighting property for your character only, I think. Um, local parts, like if you wanted to only one player or certain players to see certain parts on their screens and not everyone you could use filtering enabled for that um, it can be used for you know a variety of things and it'll work well for you if you use it right as it efficiently and that's what I'm gonna try to teach you guys during this series so that still doesn't entirely answer the question <clears throat> of what filtering enabled is what filtering enabled is is when you have filtering on I'm gonna to refer to filtering enabled as FE for the remainder of this series because saying filtering enabled a lot gets tiring and most people call it FE anyway but when FE is on a special filter takes place in your game so when filtering enabled is off we have these clients. The clients are the people connected to your game server. And then we have the server. So when filtering enables is off, the changes that uh, occur on the client screen, they automatically replicate or update on the server. And every change made on the server replicates to all other clients. So say we have this exploiter, uh, you have some leader stats inside of your player object, each of your players, and this uh, nasty exploiter, he changes his points to 50,000. When you have filtering enabled off, that change is going to replicate to the server, which is going to replicate to everyone else. So on that leaderboard on the top corner of your screen, um, it's going to say points 50,000 under their name, by their name. Um, but when filtering enabled is on, if they try to exploit with cheat engine or whatever and make that change to their leader stats on their client, when filtering enabled is on, it's going to block that change automatically. So it won't update on the server. So they can't buy that super OP item in your game with exploited money. Um, to further demonstrate this, I'm going to use a test server. Uh, you can open a test server by going to the test ribbon on the top of your studio screen or pressing F7. 
Uh, test servers are very useful for testing things, uh, especially filtering enabled stuff. Because as opposed to just running play solo, where everything's the client, with the test server you get the server and the client. Uh, and since filtering enabled has to do with communication between the client and the server, that's why a test server is so helpful for, helpful for testing filtering enabled stuff. Alright, so, filtering enabled, it's this special wall that blocks changes from the client to the server. Uh, such as parts generated on a client screen through a local script, uh, changes made to a player's leader stats through a local script, all that jazz. If an exploiter makes their own script to fill your place with bricks and flood it, when filtering enabled is on, it's only going to update on their screen because that special wall is going to block all the parts. So, uh, let me see, do I have it on? Yeah, I have it on. So, I have filtering enabled on. This is the server. This is the one player in our game, the client. Uh, a client is just a player in your game, someone connecting to your game server. So I'm moving around, la 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 la. On the server, we see this player moving around. So, there are a few exceptions to filtering enabled. One of those exceptions that's going to automatically get replicated to the server no matter what is your player's movement. Another one I think are also animations like that you play on your player. I don't know all the exceptions and those aren't particularly important right now. Um, I'm going to start by showing you guys what's going to happen when filtering enables is off like I should have done before. Da -da -da -da. Okay, go on our server window here. We are looking at our client, the one client in our game. So, uh, say we have a local script that's going to damage our player's health all the way down to 20. Let's look on the server. Their health updated. We can go into workspace on the server and we see their health is slowly regenerating because it got damaged on the client. So that's when filtering enabled is off. That change to their health automatically got replicated to the server. And I'm going to make a local script here. Uh, game dot players dot local script or er, no game dot players dot local player dot character dot humanoid dot health equals twenty. I'm gonna add a weight there so it doesn't break anything. So uh, <clears throat> whenever this local script loads, it's gonna set or it's gonna wait two seconds. It's gonna set our character's humanoid's health to twenty. So uh, again, filtering filtering enabled is off. <clears throat> and let's see if it makes that change. Wait a couple seconds. Okay, it made the change on the client. It made it on the server because FE is off right now. But we're going to go to workspace, turn filtering enabled on, start another test server. And let's see what happens when we try to make that change from the client. Okay, it's going to wait a second. Damage. It did not update on the server. So, if we go to workspace here and our player is humanoid, it says the health is 20. And it's not regenerating for whatever reason, but we don't care. Uh, we go on the server's workspace, we get their humanoid, its health is still at 100. It's still at 20 here. So that change that the client made to the game, it did not update on the server. Because filtering enabled was on. That special wall blocked the exploiter from doing whatever change to the game. So, uh, now I'm going to use a different example with a for loop. Uh, wait one, for i equals 0, 10, do local part equals instance.new part, uh, parent is game.workspace, part.name equals uh, math dot random 110 to string I don't know why I named it part dot size equals vector 3 dot new math dot uh, method random 110 train in the distance and blah 
blah blah and we're gonna do this for uh, the parts position two Size equals factor three dot new. What is this error? Expected blah 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 to close blah blah blah. Column 46 got blah blah blah. Uh, oh, okay. I have a bunch of parentheses there for no reason. Man, uh, script analysis is your error is your warnings. Okay, that took a lot of unnecessary time. Uh, okay, uh, start up a test server and let's run this virus on our client. So, we're that nasty exploiter that's trying to hack the game. Uh, we just made a script that's going to insert a bunch of random parts into the workspace, destroying everyone's quality gameplay time. That change was just made on our exploiter's client. Let's go to the server. Nothing's there. So yeah, guys, that's filtering enabled. That's the power of filtering enabled. But uh, say we wanted that local script to generate bricks in the workspace, but it was actually made by us, and we wanted that those changes to replicate to the server. Well, that's where remote events come in. Uh, remote events and remote functions <coughs> are what you're going to use to make your game filtering enabled compatible. And I, like I said, I'm not going to go into those this video. That's going to be next video when we get into the code of filtering enabled. So, um, yeah, filtering enabled. Uh, I feel like I should say again. Changes made on the server automatically replicate to every client on the game. So say you have a server script that does this exact same thing as the local script. It would update for every client automatically because it's the server and the server has all the power. The, um, but filtering enabled, it takes away the power of those clients that they would have otherwise if it was off. Um, when filtering enabled is on changes made in local scripts to your game aren't going to affect it. Um, yeah, to the workspace, to player stats, stuff like that. If you guys have questions about uh, specific instances where you're wondering if that'll work or not, just post in the comments. I'll answer it to the best of my ability. Um, also, I'm going to show you guys a couple of services here in our Explorer that you should know about. Uh, replicated first, uh, when I made my tutorial on intro GUIs, we used it for an intro. Replicated first is just whatever gets replicated to your client first, before anything when they join the game. We don't need to worry about that with filtering enabled, because it's for local stuff, it's for intro GUIs, stuff like that. But there are these two other things we need to know about, replicated storage and server storage. And server script service, actually. So, uh... Server script service, this is where the uh, quote unquote main scripts of your game is, are going to run. Say you have a minigame with a round changer script, that script is going to be in here because we want it to be protected by the server, the client can't see it or mess with it. Uh, this is just a safe place for server scripts to run. I know a lot of people used workspace for that a long time ago, uh, but that's why we have server script service now. So, uh, server script service and server storage from their names you would hopefully guess that they're only accessible by the server so if I'm on a client I'm a client playing your game I can't see something that's in server script service or server storage another thing a lot of people used to do years ago was store stuff in lighting because you couldn't see it in game uh, say you had a weapon shop in your game in that mini games you might clone a tool from lighting into the player's backpack uh, if they bought it. That's what server storage is going to be for. Because uh, those are going to be items that the server is going to use. Uh, blah blah blah. Except if we had a filtering enabled on in our game and we had a shop, we would either just 
keep all those tools in replicated storage so the client could access them or send a remote event request to the server so that the server could clone it into the player's uh, backpack and such. Um, that brings me to replicated storage. So server storage is stuff that only the server is going to use. It's stored on the server out of place where no one can see it for later use. Replicated storage is the same thing except both the server and the client can use it. So if we didn't uh, feel like sending a remote event to the server to grab those tools, we would just put our stuff in replicated storage. And for the local script in our shop GUI, we would just clone it uh, straight from there to the player. Except we really shouldn't do that either because since it's a change made to a physical object in the workspace, uh, cloning that tool to them, or to the player anyway, it wouldn't take effect on the server on everyone else's screens because that it was cloned through a local script. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. I guess that's all I'm going to explain for this video. If you guys have any questions or misconceptions about filtering enabled that you want to post and clear up, just uh, you know, ask in the comments. I'll answer to the best of my ability. If you guys want to see any specific new content videos from me, also put that in the comments. Uh, I love hearing from you guys. I try to read every comment in the game, or not in the game, on the video. Uh, I'm going to end this tutorial for now. I'll try to upload in the next few days. See you guys later.